What's up, everybody? I am Anne Louise Davidson. I'm a professor in education at Concordia University in Montreal. I'm the director of the New Innovation Lab, and I also hold the research chair in Maker Culture. I am here to talk to you today about playful education for change, and I am uh, speaking directly from cold Arctic Montreal, where we like to build snowmen for fun. The Innovation Lab at Concordia is an institutional project that the university is launching as a bold move to support students to become skilled and confident innovators. The purpose of the lab is obviously to offer a risk-free, non-competitive, playful, failure-positive environment where students can develop and test ideas and also uh, build some skills for the 21st century. The lab functions in collaboration with a lot of our internal units uh, inside the Concordia University innovation ecosystem, but also in partnership with many other organizations and our mentors for the lab come from these partnerships. We're dealing with a lot of contextual challenges and this creates a lot of layers uh, around which we need, we need to think. Uh, the first one is that we are entering the fourth industrial revolution. And what this brings in terms of a context is that there's a meshing of the physical, digital and biological systems that we have never seen before. And it's increasing the demand for skills. It's, in, it's increasing the demands for knowing how to deal with the iTech industry and also for innovation. Innovators. The fourth industrial revolution is not the only uh, context in which we're dealing. We're also dealing with the pandemic and, and since the beginning of, of, of the COVID-19 pandemic, universities across the world have entered a time of turmoil. If you remember in 2020, uh, in March, the, in the span of two weeks, course delivery moved online, students were sent home, international students returned to their countries, campuses, campuses were deserted, and it was a real war zone. Mental illness issues started surfacing, exhaustion settled in, and not just in our student population, but also in our staff and faculty, and we really haven't been able to catch our breath since then. And, and this has created short-term consequences that are now turning into long-term damage at all levels. Uh, when we look at this, it traces a very gloomy picture. But when we look forward and we think of what's needed, uh, the Canadian government is very well aware that we need a nation of innovators to help propel us forward. The Innovation Lab focuses on the five traditional innovation skills, which, is, uh, which are strategic thinking, critical thinking, communication, creativity, collaboration, but we're also adding three skills to this, which is networking or, or opportunity seeking, uh, prototyping, which is creating early versions of ideas and, and, and trying to externalize them either in analytical models or theoretical models or also concrete models, and also developing leadership skills in students to help propel them into the future. We're doing this in the background also of the sustainable development goals um, this is a no-brainer in terms of the direction. The real question lands into how do we do this as a university? And, and the question I like to ask is how can we be symbiable? Symbi symbiable being a, a portmanteau word that brings in together the two concepts of symbiosis and viability. So in other words, how can we work in a way where we're, uh, we're working in symbiosis with the environment and with each other and we also can be viables in such a way that we can live together on this planet for a very long time. The approach I'm using is challenge-based learning, but let me make a few uh, commentaries on what I like to call tongue-in-cheek classical pedagogical innovation. Let's look at what pedagogical innovation is in a traditional sense. We usually look at the traditional ivory tower and, and we compare it to the, the information feeding channels. So in that traditional ivory tower, there are channels of information where people deliver content. And, and in consequence, we have students who are actually running around to get some A's. And in, and in that traditional ivory context, an A means success. The problem is when we look at A's and what they actually mean for the future of work or for the realities of of, of the workforce, they don't really mean much. There are certain uh, criteria or certain qualities that you build as you, as you uh, run around to get these A's in this traditional ivory tower, but there are other ways of doing this. And this is what pedagogical innovators usually do. They're aware that there's a 
culture shock chasm. And as soon as you bring the students into some innovative pedagogies, they will be afraid because you will break the rules of the traditional how to get an A or how to mirror what the professor does or how to uh, memorize content to be successful on a, te on, a, on, a, on a test. There is a bit of insecurity that is created. And when you do this and you build an alternative educational reality, what you usually do is, 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 is you build things in small packages. So one example of this is problem-based learning objects. So you would package ill-defined problems in the format of contexts, and, and students would find problems in there and they would pursue these problems in terms of how they can leverage their, their, their network, their resources, and then formulate uh, original answers to problems. Or also case-based learning objects. So the students would run into <clears throat> a case study and, and try to, uh, to learn from uh, some, some kind of rich uh, experience that comes from the case. We know that when you build our alternative educational realities, people, who try to get there experience culture shock. So by definition, what we try to do when we innovate in pedagogy is we build the caring expectations bridge. We say, we're going to be there for you. We're gonna bridge uh, the two realities together. And, and let's go there, guys, and experience this. And don't worry about marks, because we'll figure that out. We'll focus on the things that you do well. And, and what will happen is that we will transform ourselves into savvy tour guides. And, and we're gonna bring students as if we're going on a field trip to experience this alternative educational reality, which is always seen as an addition, an extra, another way of doing things. So here we see some people having fun in the mud and playing in this alternative educational reality. It's a lot of fun, but there are also other ways to do this. So the reflection I'm having right now is, uh, how can we use challenge-based learning so that the university uh, context can become richer. So challenge-based learning by definition is a framework for solving, uh, for learning while solving real world challenges. The framework is collaborative, hands-on. It asks participants uh, to identify big ideas, ask good questions, discover and solve challenges, gain in-depth knowledge, uh, and develop 21st century skills and then share them, share their thoughts with the world. I have four examples which I will um, propose as seeds instead of boxes. So one example is the face mask challenge that I'm running in the winter with the Innovation Lab, neighborhood free Wi-Fi, neighborhood run CRM, and maker fundamentals. So I'm proposing those as the, with the metaphor of the seeds to see what can happen next. So we put the seeds back where the ivory tower should be, and we think of how can we do this? What other ingredients must we uh, integrate? We need women. Now, what am I saying? We don't need women. These are not women. These are superheroes. So we have corporate superheroes, school superheroes, university superheroes, community superheroes, and NGO superheroes. And those are our partners and our mentors and the people who will help us enact learning as we go through the challenges. So what we do is we reinvite people inside the university system and we plant the challenges as seeds and then we let the superheroes mingle with the students, bring them back inside, see what can happen, and then let people mingle and, uh, and duplicate the interactions and see if the seeds might sprout at one point. And it creates a big mess, which, which I'm completely comfortable with, but we can discuss that further during, um, during our talk uh, or our conversation or synchronous conversations. That will be interesting. So the impact of such an approach well, because I just started, I have very little uh, to, to share with you. If I might talk about very, very specific impacts, I will refer back to the challenge I ran uh, over the summer. It was not a four-month challenge, but a, a six-week challenge that I ran that was a face mask challenge in collaboration with the uh, Institut de Recherche Robert Sauvé sur la santé et sécurité au travail. So what uh, students were doing is that they were building, they were, they were developing better face masks to help curb COVID-19 and uh, they were uh, measuring the impact by working in the aerosol filtration lab to see what, uh, what these new designs would do. Uh, in terms of progress, if you look at this, the progress is very limited. We're also talking about a six-week challenge. So in some cases, for example, for creativity, we have small indicators of regression, actually, and that's because people started understanding a little bit more what creativity entailed. 
But there are places where there is more movement in terms of leadership, uh, half a point on a five-point Likert scale, and then there's almost a point, one full point of improvement on the Likert scale for prototyping, and about half a point also for communication. Now, this gives us all interesting indicators and, and, and innovation competencies on which we should work further for, for longer periods. But what I want to talk about, which is probably more relevant, is what the Innovation Lab can actually do in terms of its influence uh, for student learning. The first one is when we build innovation skills, we prepare students to, uh, to face the future in a way that, that bridges what happens in university and in a more traditional ivory tower and the needs of what happens when they are propelled inside a workplace and they start working with industry partners, or corporate partners, or school partners, or community partners. They also build a network of personal connections. And that's probably one of the biggest influence on students is that they are so connected with partners. They are so resourceful. They meet people, they speak to people. So their network in, in, in improves and they build you know, one on one personal connections with all these people. And also they are able to work for the greater good. This will be difficult to measure in the long term, um, in the short term, but easier to measure in the long term. But the sustainable development goals is definitely an area in which we wish to, uh, to think about and, and probably one point of conversation that, uh, on which I'd like to work and, 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 and discuss during the event is how can we build sustainability challenges to help propel us forward. So we uh, welcome collaborators, uh, partners, mentors to join us uh, in the Innovation Lab. This is how to contact us. We have an email address. We're on Twitter and on Instagram. And I look forward to discussing with you in a few weeks. Thank you.